Good afternoon. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good here. Nice day out there, isn't it? Beautiful day. Beautiful. Amen. We need. Well, we want to welcome folks here to this, what we're calling the God is Walking Together in God's Word. We tried to do one last week and didn't work out too well. We want to do one again today. My colleague here is Gary Butts. He's the preacher of the Portland Avenue Church of Christ here in Lowell, Kentucky. We talked about two weeks ago about what it meant to be a servant of God and a little bit about different kind of foundations that we need to have. And I want to go further than that today on we need to have the right kind of foundation if we're going to be a true servant of God. And we talked about a lot about that Jesus is a foundation and he's given us the word of God. Uh, do you, can you think of any other kind of foundations that folks try to base their lives on? They try to base their life on anything that they uh, think is going to give them um hope they're going to base their lives based on, they're going to choose a foundation based on their worldview. They will do it based on uh, their particular values. Um, just any number of things, really. Right. We talked, I think, last time about the passage of the Gospels where it compared two people who one, one put their foundation on uh, the sandy ground or the uh, ground that didn't have much basis, and we know what happened to it. We know on a physical level, if you build you a house out there on the seashore, right on the beach, uh, most likely you're going to have some problems. And then they talk about the one who built his home on the solid rock, which it lasted, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, like you said a minute ago, the other foundations are not necessarily wrong in themselves as long as they put the Lord first in their lives. I was many years ago in Louisiana, this is probably the late 70s, early 80s, and heard Nathan Burks, the late Nathan Burks, preach in a meeting at Glenmora Church on different kind of anchors of the soul. We sang that song, Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life? He mentioned some of the things you mentioned that we put our anchors in, but those don't really give us the right kind of foundation. And in the word of God, we know, it, it, we know it's the word of God. Uh, it says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And we mentioned last week about the importance of knowing God's word because we know that if we, we can hear a lot of things around us and that are not, that sound scriptural, but are not. Can you think of some things we might hear that, I, that sound scriptural because we turn our TV on, our radio on. We sometimes go to our congregations, and I think sometimes we don't take the time to study for ourselves. I think last week you talked about the importance of knowing the Word of God. Can you elaborate more on that? Well, the thing is, is um, you know, there's nothing wrong with sound bites. There's nothing wrong with people's opinions. Uh, but you need to be centered in on the Word of God. And the thing is, is that you can listen to, you can listen to a lot of different instructors, a lot of different teachers, and a lot of different preachers as well, that may be teaching their opinion of what it is that they're looking at or what it is they're reading, and their opinions are valid. However, their opinion is not the word of God, and it could actually be in complete opposition. The best thing to do is you have got to go to that one source, that one source that we know is correct, that one source that we can rely on, that one source that we can look at is completely unbiased, and that's the Word of God. He had written it there for our edification, our instruction, and uh, to help us understand uh, the type of foundation that we ought to build upon. That's right. Like, like Paul wrote in letter to Timothy, he said in, all scripture given by inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Um, many people don't really have a basis of their faith in the word of God. I remember one church I was the preacher at, the Shawnee, Old Shawnee Church of Christ in Louisville. Won't mention any names in this story here, but we had one man there. Gary knows the man, won't mention any names. 
but he was not brought up in the Church of Christ. And the man, preacher there at the, at the time before me said one time in his lesson that I want you to look to the Word of God for my basis. And this fellow here had not, where his church he had gone to, had not been taught much of the Word of God. He was kind of surprised that somebody would go to the Word of God for basis. And we know that's the way we need to go because this passage that is quoted a minute ago said it's profitable. Now we hear that word profit in a secular sense. Our ears perk up. We want to put our money on things that will bring us good interest, which is not much today, but good stocks. If you have stocks, you want the best ones. You want to try to make money. So if we do it on a secular basis, how much more should we do it on a spiritual basis? It said that the word of God is profitable. That should perk our ears up. And we only had one verse in the whole Bible that said that, that'd be enough. But it says here it's doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, in righteousness at the man of God. When it says man of God, it's a generic term, means men, women, and children. Plain from GPC. That we want to be complete. We want to be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I think, I know that if, we want to be equipped, God will help us do that. Do you think that it comes automatically? Do we automatically become a Christian and are equipped for our good works? Um, you think if you were to go out and buy a mechanic set for your automobile, just because you've got the mechanic set, you'd go ahead and work your car and tear it apart? No, I probably couldn't. No, are you not just because... No, just because you become a Christian, that is the beginning. That is just the beginning. You're on a long, long journey. And uh, there's a number of ways to get equipped. The very first and the most important way is to get into God's Word. Another way is you need to come together and you meet with fellow believers. The reason for that uh, has multiple uh, implications. The first thing is, is that we need support. We are being... Uh, attacked by Satan in the world every day, and it seems to be getting worse and worse just in our culture alone. And it's quite easy to get discouraged. And it is it is vitally important that you have your brothers and sisters in your church family to fall back on, to rely on. Also, those same individuals can help you grow. It's just like if you were to buy this mechanic set, you know, a long time ago, I tried to work on my car when I was I was 18, this was like a long, long time ago, and I needed to replace the brakes on my car. I went out, I bought the brakes, and I took the wheels off, and I took the parts off, and I laid them out, and it didn't make any difference. As careful as I was, I had this manual, I couldn't get those brakes back on it the way they should go until I had a friend come over and show me what it was I was doing wrong. And so a lot of times, that friendship, with other Christian believers, their different experiences will also help to instruct us and will be an aid to us. There's just, there's just numerous ways to be equipped in the Word of God, but the thing is, is you have to go out and you have to pursue it like you pursue truth. You know, you wouldn't take a shovel and lean on it and uh, say, um, uh, pray, for, uh, pray for help from God, expect a whole group here. You got to grab that shovel and you got to start digging your way. Right. Talks about that. We need to be willing to learn. And I think if we're willing to learn, we're willing to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, the Lord does that for us. He gives what well, gives us, like you said, the Word of God, first of all, naturally, in Jesus. Then He gives fellow believers to help us. And these fellow believers, every one of us is on a different maybe stage in our lives. We have, I think I mentioned last time about marathons. Now, I don't, I'm not a runner or anything. I'm, I like to walk, but in these marathons, people run those and walk those or whatever in different stages. They all have their eyes on the prize of getting to the finish line. They all walk at different stages. So all, think as long as we are walking, walking shows that we're making progress. The Lord wants to make progress uh it said in ephesians 5 and 2 says and walk in love as christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragrant 
offering and sacrifice to God. And we know we've been called out of darkness. Now, whether we knew it or not, we were controlled by the devil. And now it says we're now in a kingdom of the son of his love in the marvelous light of the gospel and people like that. So what, once we're in this marvelous light of the gospel, once we're willing to use every resource the Lord has for us, I think that's when we start to grow. But while we're growing the grace and knowledge of Jesus, do we have responsibility to help others grow? Or is that just, or do we say, well, I got it, you go find it? No, absolutely. You know, the thing is, is uh, I mentioned this another time, but you build that foundation and your foundation has got to be solid. And if your foundation is anything other than on Christ and what he did for us and the belief in him, then to begin with, you're working with a faulty foundation. The second thing is, is once you've got your foundation built, foundation is wonderful to have, but it doesn't mean anything unless you build and grow upon it. And that's what we need to do. And that's once again, why it is so important to know God's word. How can we disciple and how can we bring about new people and bring them to a better understanding of the Lord unless we understand ourselves? And once again, that is, that's the reason why we need to get into God's word. We have a responsibility to teach the proper doctrine. And that's a very serious and awesome responsibility. And it's something I'm afraid that uh, many people don't do. They, they go to church on Sundays and uh, then they go back out into the world and they think they're, they're good to go. Amen. I know we, we know we are saved individually. There's no coattails. We're getting ready to have primaries here in Kentucky, Indiana, election coming in the fall. And we know that in the, in the political realm, sometimes if a uh, candidate on the top of the ticket is very popular, somebody down here lower may get in. It doesn't work that way spiritually. We have to get in on our own and to, to, to the word and to the salvation. But I think you said earlier, we are walking together. Many patients, the word of God, it has to pass these one another, let one another do this. So we need to be, like you said, find a believing church and then be willing to help others find the marvelous light of the gospel. If we if we found it, we need to help others find it also. And it's like you said earlier, all of those are different stages. We've all gone through trials and we may have, you may preach some Sunday or vice versa and somebody say, well, I never heard that brother Gary. Is that in the word of God? We know it is, but it's always been there. But God shows us different things in our life or different stages that will help us in that stage right then. And once we are learning that tr new truth to us, not new to the Lord, that's when we're to help others find that way also. So I think we can, we, we need to be working together as believers and having the solid rock of the word of God. And that just tells us that we need to, we've said many times, get into the word. It's good to read about the word of God. We've, we've all used maybe commentaries or I've written some books here, some studies, but it's not true because I say it or you say it. It's only true is that the word of God says that. And I think we can make application to our lives. And I think it's the thing is that, we need to be growing each day. We've, we've all seen people in our congregations who seem not to have grown in the Lord's, in the faith over decades. Now, that may be their fault or maybe we're not doing our job. Like you said, we're not doing our job. How can, how can we uh, help or influence or what's the word for it? Uh, help others want to know more about God's word. That's kind of a rough question. Sure in yeah, no, today's yeah. culture, there's not a whole lot of people interested in God's word. If you start talking about God's word and what the Bible says, in a lot of cases, uh, you're going to be tuned out. Yeah. 
you're going to be considered uh, a fanatic. You're going to be considered to be unreasonable, unscientific. There are just any number of reasons that they'll give. But people will naturally have, not naturally, but people have a tendency when you start talking about God and things of a spiritual nature, then they, they just want to tune you out. It amazes me because at the same time, if you start talking about uh, fortune tellers or you start talking about card reading or just any number of things, then they're, like you say, their ears will perk up and they're going to listen. The best way, I think, for us to reach other people and to give them that hunger is they have got to see the love of God in us. That's how we are known, that the Bible tells us, that you're known by the fruits that you produce. We've got to be loving. We've got to be understanding. And the thing is, is we got to practice what we preach. We have got to practice what we preach. And when people see Jesus and the Holy Spirit in you, that's going to create a desire in them for the same thing. And your walk is going to be your greatest magnet. It's going to be your greatest light to bring it to other people. But then once we get your interest, once again, you got to get back to being able to properly instruct them and properly disciple them. And once again, that is done through love. It's done through a, a relationship with them. But most importantly, it's done through the teaching of God's word and our ability to make it fit in their lives for them. Right. When I was going to school, we sang a song in the chorus called, they'll know we're Christians by our love. And we can tell people all we want about, I think we as preachers, teachers, and like that, we should be able to tell people what the word of God says and maybe what it means. But until, like you said, until they find it for themselves in the Word of God, and then we need to help them find it, but also, you said, walk in it and live it daily, and uh, we sang a song, uh, I'll put Jesus first in my life. Let's put him first in our lives. We're going to put his Word first, and think, basically, it's, you live out your faith. Um, in the book of Jude, the book, Jew started off with saying he wanted to write about our common salvation. Now, Jew was the half brother of Jesus, the brother of James. He started off wanting to talk about our common salvation. But then he got off where he said, I want you to contend for the faith once for all deliver the saints. He had teacher, people around him that were not teaching the word of God, but seemed like they, they, people thought they were. And they talked about all about those kind of folks. Then we got to the very end of it. He went back to the point, like in verse 20 of Jude, says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and leads to eternal life and have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by sexting them out of the fire. To others show mercy and fear, hate even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who's able to keep you from stumbling, presents you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now forever and ever. It starts off with, we need to build ourselves up. You mentioned earlier one, mentioned about getting a big shovel out, stick it down the ground, but that ditch you want to build is not going to be, not going to go automatically. I think I said last week or two weeks ago that facetiously we may think, well, I'm good. I, I, I've been baptized into Christ. I received my sins forgiven. I received the Holy Spirit indwelling me. I'm going to put my Bible under my pillow next morning and go wake up, know everything. Now we know that's not true. But here it says, Jesus is building yourself up. So that means you need to work on it, work out your own salvation. And it says praying, keeping, the word keep. Christian life is a life of action. When it tells us to do something, it means keep on keeping on. And main thing is in the love of God, we know that that will lead to eternal life. And then he says that we need to help others find it. And then he ends that passage there in Jude 25 about the authority of Jesus Christ, that he has all authority, it says, in the Great Commission. So we know when we're speaking, 
we're speaking the oracles of God, we're speaking by his authority, and that should be sobering to us that we can, that we have in our possession a love letter from God. You know, in the old days, people wrote more letters than they do now. We've had people in our families who may have went away to war or went away somewhere. We didn't see them for a long time. We tre treasured their letters and their, till they got back. Now today we have social media. We can go online, on e e email, uh, Facebook. Uh, got an iPhone, FaceTime, things like that, Zoom, like we're doing here. But even what we're doing here, you can still treasure that teaching, that admonitions to grow in the grace of God. Like Paul said in the Colossian letter, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. That command are imperative to walk. Like you said earlier, we need to, need to put our faith into action. And I think as long as we're making progress in our walk to the Lord, the Lord's pleased, but we need to be working together. We're, thankfully, we can work together in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. And any, 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 any kind of closing comments, Gary, before we make some announcements, perhaps? Well, it's, uh, I think you pretty much covered it. I just, uh, the only thing I would encourage people to do is uh, just, um, if you really want to bring people to the Lord, you can tell them about him. You can preach to them about it, but you need to show them the love of the Lord. You need to show that to them. And uh, a lot of times people get upset because they will, they'll fail. I fell away from the Lord for a long, long time. And um, once I first started coming back, I had some old habits I had to shed. And on occasion, I would, I would slip back in those old habits and I would use some improper language. And uh, it got so that, well, it, it's, it started to bother me. And the thing is, is don't get upset when you fail, okay? Because everybody fails. Everybody wants to get better. And as long as you're working to get better, you're making progress. You know, a, a child, when a child starts to walk, doesn't just get up one day and runs. That child gets up. It learns to keep its balance, it'll take a few steps, it'll fall, it'll get up and go again, but the child keeps going. The child does not stop, may, may hurt himself, may cry, but the child gets up and goes. And that's what we need to do as Christians is we've built that foundation and we need to continue to build on top of that. And it'll take a while, but we just, we gotta be like that child. We just gotta be persistent and continue to work on it constantly. Amen on that. Um, like I said, Brother Gary is the preacher of the Portland Avenue Church. And Gary, you want to kind of tell where the church is and what time you have services? Church is at 25 Portland, uh, 2500 Portland Avenue. We have Sunday school at 10 a.m. on Sundays. We have a, uh, a worship service at 11 o'clock. At 7 p.m., we have a, uh, a study series. It varies. It normally starts at 7 o'clock and normally ends at 8. Sometimes it'll go a little bit over. But it's more of a lecture and then a question and answer period afterwards. And on Wednesday night, 7 p.m., we have a prayer meeting every Wednesday night. Okay. Uh, I, I'm a member of the Cherry Street Church of Christ at 302 Cherry Street, New Albany, Indiana. We're going to start back this coming Sunday morning, just have morning worship at 11 o'clock. So we invite you to Check that. Our website is cherrystreetchurchofchrist.com. Um, another thing I want to announce that maybe people who watch this later and are in the local area, the 73rd Annual Kentucky Indiana Christian Fellowship, scheduled for July 20th, 23rd, has been canceled this year. We hope to have it again next year. Um, I want to, our next time we do this here, talk about a person who is a servant of God is one who is walking in the truth. We mentioned the truth a lot in this lesson right now, truth, but we know that part of the world, there's a lot of truth out there, but we know that the only true truth is in the word of God. So I want to talk about what it means to walk in the truth. And I think another one we're going to do later on will be 
maybe our dedication to the word of God. We mentioned that a lot here in these first two times, but I want to get more into it that we need to be getting in the word, talking about maybe a, person, a servant of the Lord is one who believes that the Lord could come at any time. Now that should motivate us to want to be ready for his coming. It also should motivate us to want to help others get out of this darkness into the marvelous light of the gospel and should give us opportunity to be better workers for him. Uh, we sing a song, I'll work till Jesus comes. And Christian life is a life of working for him and a, a life of learning more about him each day. We sing a song more about Jesus would I know. And I, I don't think we're ever going to know all about Jesus. There, I, I think Apostle John said that if everything about Jesus' earthly life was written, it wouldn't fit in all, a book couldn't hold it. So we have, we have we're said we're going, we're, we see him, we'll be like, we'll see him like he is, and I think we're going to enjoy eternity with him more than we'll, we can understand this life. And if that's, that's the case, we should want to have others find their way also. Somebody, I'm sure all of us here, somebody told us about the Lord, I became a Christian back in 1972 and went to a, another church in the local area around the Portland Avenue congregation. And somebody invited me to come to Portland Avenue. And I came over there and I studied about the word of God and about Jesus was baptized in Christ. That was, I guess that's 40, let's see, 72, that's 48 years ago. Hard to believe that. But anyway, somebody told us about the Lord. And we ought to have enough faith in the Lord to want to help others find their way. We, I think it's the way to do it. We, we can get to, we can reach more people this way than we're going to reach in our congregation. We're going, I'm going to save this recording. I'll put a slide or two in the beginning. We'll upload it to my YouTube channel. And then we'll share that on Facebook. We'll share it on our email list. And if anybody hears this here, if they've got any questions, they can send us a message, Larry Miles at 1952 at gmail.com. Anyway, there. So, you have anything you want to say before I close this thing, Gary? No, I think we're good to go, my friend. Okay, maybe we'll try sometime next week. It seems like uh, Wednesday, Thursday, or Fridays are the good days for this in the afternoon. So, I'll hit this end button. Hope I get us off here without any difficulty so thanks a lot brother all right thank you uh, yeah in meeting